Elias of London. It's wonderful to see everyone here in the similar marches and demonstrations around the world taking place today. Now, it's probably very fitting that I'm here representing Care for the Wild and Born Free, two charities that have actually campaigned on this issue for decades that have recently merged to form one stronger charity to stand up for animals both at home and abroad. It's a very important time as well that we understand what's happening with Africa's lions. You know, I spend a lot of my time talking about the tragedy of the destruction of Africa's wildlife, particularly its rhinos and its elephants. But often we overlook and we forget at our peril what's happening to Africa's lions. Let me just bring this into perspective for you. In 1980, there were over 75,000 lions across the African continent. Today, there's estimated to probably be less than 25,000 lions left. They're only to be found in around 23% of the geographical areas that you would have found them in 50, 60 years ago. And they're being hit on all sides by both environmental and man-made factors. Climate change is happening, despite what some people might tell you. And in parts of Africa, it's having a huge impact on lions and their ability to reproduce and their ability to find food and their ability to increase their numbers. We're also finding that humans are increasingly having a negative impact on lions as well. As the population increases, particularly livestock farming and meat production, more and more farmers are killing lions. They're poisoning, snaring and shooting them to protect their livestock. And then we have the hunting. You can go and hunt and shoot a lion in Tanzania for around $50,000. And that's big money. And many African nations will continue to try and cash in on that. And then you have the illegal hunting and the poaching that goes on alongside it. And when you put all that together, this species is on the verge of complete and utter annihilation. And what we've got to ask ourselves, are we going to be the last generation to see lions in the wild in Africa? Are we happy to see that? No! Are we only going to see these in horrible zoos or safari parks? No! Exactly. So we must make a stand now. We must tell the people of the world. We must tell the South African government and other nations in Africa, enough is enough. We will stand up for these species. We will stand up for this wonderful animal. We will not allow it to disappear. I often talk about wildlife and I talk about corruption, greed and ignorance as being key drivers for its destruction. That could be here in the UK when we talk about badgers. It can be obviously talking about Africa's elephants and its rhinos. But it's most definitely the case when we talk about lions. The sinister can hunting business is all about exploitation and greed. Because it costs you $50,000 to shoot a lion in Tanzania, there are many clever people, although they think they're clever, in South Africa, that decided they could do it cheaper. They could produce a production line of lions, so you can come and shoot one from Dallas or Shanghai or Frankfurt for around $5,000 a piece. And that's what they've done. They set up a cruel, horrible, horrendous business, and there's now over 160 of these so-called lion farms across South Africa that any one time are breeding around 5,000 lions to be shot by a gun, to be shot by a bow in the most horrendous conditions possible. There is nothing, nothing that is justifiable about this business. It's about corruption, it's about greed, and it's about cruelty. There have been steps to try and regulate this business, but they haven't been very successful. To be fair to the South African government, a number of years ago, they tried to introduce a rule which said that these animals would have to be kept in a semi-captive environment for two years before they could be shot. But the very powerful hunting, can hunting operations in South Africa came together and in the Court of Appeal overturned that ruling because they knew that two years to keep the animal from being shot would put them out of business. On average, they're talking about four or five weeks is maximum that they would take the animal from its captive stage into an environment where they want it killed. And often it's only a matter of days. So this is a production line business of cruelty that we've never seen on this scale anywhere in the world. Now many will say in the can hunting business in South Africa that we're doing wild lions a favour by allowing hunters to come in and shoot these because we're protecting the wild lions. That is complete and utter nonsense. The can hunting business, because of the scale of it and the greed behind it and the corruption behind it, is actually decimating wild population of lions as well. And there's a number of factors behind that. Firstly, when the carcasses are sold off as trophies and exported out of the country as they are, and there's been a 112% increase in those coming out of South Africa in the last four or five years, 
the lion bones go with it. The lion bone is part of the medicinal trade in China and Southeast Asia that is growing out of control. It's destroying what's left of Africa's rhinos. It's destroying what's left of the world's tigers. And it's increasingly devouring what's left of the world's lions as well. So this legitimate trade in trophies is feeding a lion bone medicine trade that's also helping to devastate tigers because people are passing tiger bone off as being legitimate lion bone. So not only are we destroying one species, we're destroying another that's endangered as well. This is an absolute utter disgrace. And it's never going to be a legitimate business for you to breed these animals in the way that they are. They are bred in horrible conditions. Yes, there are drugging of animals taking place. Yes, people can sit on the back of a pickup truck and shoot away with an assault rifle at these animals. They're not martyrs, as we've just heard. Many of them will be terribly wounded before they die. Or they might shoot them with a crossbow. We've all seen some of the images coming out of South Africa and other nations. It's absolutely horrendous. And it must stop. And it's not legitimate. And anywhere in the world, this should never be happening again. And that's why we've got to make our voice heard. Enough is enough. We must stop this can torture. We stop this can hunting destruction of this wonderful species. Yeah. I'm afraid the lobby groups, the powerful organizations that want to keep this going, are influencing a lot of what's happening. At CITES, the international body that's meant to protect species like lions, there's been a big pushback to prevent this animal being listed as Appendix 1 to give it the most protected species that it genuinely needs. In the United States, to get it on the endangered species list, again, has been years of torturous negotiations with wildlife groups like Born Free and HSI and others involved. But there's been a huge pushback from the hunting industry, from bodies like the National Rifle Association and others, to have a significant influence over the American political system to keep this horrible business going. We're beginning to see what I hope is a change in Europe. And all credit to Lion Aid and other charities that have been lobbying the European Commission and members of the European Parliament. There'll be meetings again next week where they're looking at the whole issue of trophies coming into Europe. Now, I know there's mixed opinion about what the impact of that will be, and we'll have to see. There's a lot more work to be done. But at least the politicians, at least the European Commission and the member states are beginning to focus on where they might have to close these loopholes that are allowing these animal trophies to come in from lions. Because if we don't do anything about that, in countries like the UK or Germany or France, or anywhere else in Europe, we are never going to stop this madness. We're just not. So we have to take action in those areas too. And we talk about the exploitation of these animals. Probably the worst element of it is what we've heard already. The walking with lions, the petting lion cub businesses. This is an add-on value system almost in this carnage that's been created. So thousands and thousands of tourists will go to South Africa, maybe with the best of intentions, and we'll go and see a cub and pet it or walk with a lion and think they're having a wonderful experience and actually they're contributing to a conservation project. Actually, they're contributing to horrible mass slaughter. And what we must do is educate people to not go to those businesses. We must work with tourist companies to tell them they should not send their customers to those businesses. And we must keep campaigning and campaigning hard to bring back the reality of what those businesses are about to the world. Because too many of us, I'm afraid, just go and have a holiday and just want to have a good time and not think about the consequences of the cruelty that what we're doing will lead to. And we've got to put a stop to that. Do you agree? Yes! Exactly. We have an opportunity to do things differently, but we've now got to act. Time is not on our side. Lions are in a very precarious position. Their numbers are dwindling fast. And they're not a commodity to be traded. They're not an animal to be broken down into bits and sold. They're not an animal that is only worth a head that can be put on someone's wall in Shanghai or Dallas. They're not an animal that's only worth the bones that can be ground up for some medicine that has no real value whatsoever. They are the top of the food chain. They are an amazing species that's enchanted us for generations, that are part of our folklore, part of our history. Everywhere we look here in Trafalgar Square, we see lions. Why are those lions there? because they're there to show the power, pride and majesty of this species that's enchanted generations. Are we going to just stand by and let these animals slaughtered in this way? Are we just going to stand by and let them be dragged around and drugged and shot and maimed? Are we going to stay silent while this goes on where most of the world remains ignorant, are we? No! No, we're not. We're going to keep campaigning. We're going to keep fighting for lions. We're going to bring to the world's attention the greed and corruption at the heart of this business. We can shut down the can hunting operations in South Africa. We can shut down similar operations in other countries. 
We can get this species the protection globally that it needs. We can stop the trade in its bones. We can bring around great protection for it. There are wonderful NGOs here in other parts of the world that are working to protect lions in the wild, to rescue them, to get them back into the wild, to protect them in their native areas. There are great projects working with farmers and local individuals to try and ensure they can eke out a living without having to kill these animals. And all that is overshadowed by this horrible greed behind this business. It's grown very quickly in the last 20 years, but it could be shrunk very quickly as well. We are making progress with this. I welcome all the organizers to today's event. I welcome all the events that are going on around the world. We need to shout loud and clear for lions. We want to protect lions. We want to protect their future. We want to be the generation that made a difference, that stood our ground, that said enough is enough. We don't want these animals killed anymore. We don't want them made and trained anymore. We want to protect them for the future, for our future, for our children's and their children's future as well. So keep on fighting. I'm proud to be with you today. Rest assured that Born Free and Care for the Wild, as charities that have come together, will work very hard on this and continue to campaign wherever we can, working with other charities like Lion Aid and others in this field like PAL as well. Thank you, everyone. Let's keep fighting.